Hello. We continue uh, from the book Philothea, an introduction to the devout life. And we are at part two, chapter 21. The title is How to Communicate. And what St. Francis de Sales means by this is how to receive Holy Communion well. And he says here, Begin your preparation for Holy Communion on the preceding evening with aspirations and ejaculations of love, retiring earlier than usual to your room in order to rise earlier the next morning. And if you wake in the night, let your heart and mouth break forth in holy words, where your soul may be perfumed and ready to receive the bridegroom who watches while you sleep and makes ready countless graces and favors for you. If you do but dispose yourself to receive them, rise joyfully in the morning thinking of the great happiness which awaits you and after confession go with full confidence and deep humility to receive that heavenly food which will nourish you unto life everlasting. And when you have said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come unto me, do not again move either your head or your lips, either in prayer or sighs, but raising your head so as to enable the priest to see what he does, open your mouth gently and moderately, and then resigning yourself wholly to the reception of that great blessing, wait for the ministering priest to give it to you, and in faith, hope, and charity, Receive him in whom, by whom, and for whom you believe, hope, and love. So St. Francis here is, is helping us to realize what great gift it is to receive Jesus in Holy Communion and that we need to prepare ourselves well and be aware and if possible go to Communion daily if you have that opportunity um, and it's it's not, uh, it doesn't get in the way of, of you um, doing your duties and getting your work done. Um, if it's possible, go, go to daily Mass and receive Jesus. And he um, mentions um, communion on the tongue here. Um, this, is, this is truly like receiving the kiss of God. It is the kiss of God when we receive Holy Communion. We receive his beating, bleeding heart, even when we don't see it. He's hidden. But in the Eucharistic miracles, we see that the host uh, is changed into flesh, bleeding flesh, the suffering heart of Jesus. And so he describes it beautifully here. Believe that as the bee having gathered the dew of heaven and the sweets of earth from the flowers and converted them into honey, carries it safely to its hive. So the priest, having taken from the altar his body, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, virgin born, coming forth as a flower from the soil of humanity, feeds your body and soul with this bread of sweetness. Having received it, offer your devout homage to the King of our salvation. Lay bare to him all your inmost heart and its concerns, and cherish his presence within you for your exceeding benefit. In short, give him the best welcome that you can, and let it be seen by the holiness of all your actions that God is with you. When you are unable actually to receive him in the Holy Eucharist, then unite yourself by the earnestness of your desires to this life-giving flesh of the Savior and communicate spiritually in your heart. So you can always do a spiritual communion if you can't make it to Holy Mass. Uh, a, a simple way of doing spiritual commun communion is saying, Jesus, I love you. I can't receive you. Please come into my heart. And we can also ask um, Mother Mary, sweet Mother Mary, please ask Jesus to come into my heart 
spiritually. <laughs> That's also a wonderful way to do a spiritual communion. Your chief aim in Holy Communion should be to advance, strengthen, and comfort yourself in the love of God, receiving for love's sake what love alone can give. There is nothing in which the love of Christ is set forth more tenderly or more touchingly than in this sacrament by which he, so to say, annihilates himself for us and takes upon him the form of bread in order to feed us and unite himself closely to the bodies and souls of the faithful. Often I think, uh, before receiving Jesus, I think, oh Jesus, you annihilate yourself. You are destroyed so that I can be restored. And there was um, a priest once in in his sermon who mentioned something beautiful at the time of consecration during Holy Mass. It's the moment where the priest speaks the words over the host and the host becomes the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. And then he lifts Jesus up. And in that moment, um, it's good to say words of love to Jesus and always take time to look at him when he's lifted up, like the rising sun, to say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, I adore you. Just words of love, words of gratitude. And, and to do the same when um, the blood of Jesus is lifted afterwards in the chalice. If men of the world ask why you communicate so often, tell them that it is in order that you may learn to love God, that you may be purified from your imperfections, delivered from your perplexities, comforted in your sorrows, strengthened in your weakness. Tell them that there are two classes of men who need frequent communion, those who are perfect since surely they, above all men, should draw near to the source and fountain of all perfection, and the imperfect, in order that they may learn to be perfect, the strong, that they may not lose strength, the weak, that they may become strong, the sick, in order to be healed, the healthy, that they may not be sick, and that you who are imperfect, weak, and diseased need constant intercourse with your perfection, your strength, and your physician. Tell them that those who are not encumbered with worldly business should take advantage of their leisure and communicate frequently, and those who, on the contrary, are pressed and harassed require it all the more. For he who labors long and hard needs solid and abundant food. Tell them that you receive the blessed sacrament, that you may learn to receive it rightly. For what we do, but seldom we do ill. Therefore, communicate as often as you have permission. And remember that as the hairs amidst our snowy mountains grow white from living in the snow, so by perpetually worshiping and adoring beauty, goodness and purity in this divine sacrament, you too will become beautiful, good and pure.